Calvary Baptist Church. I uh, hope you're having a wonderful day. Just enjoying the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It sure is a blessing to be saved and to know we have God and He watches over us and we can spend time with Him and love Him. So as we look again to Psalm 91 here um, this evening, and so just wanted to bring the message for you um, here, actually just right behind my house and in the, in the, in the, just in the, kind of the backyard here. But anyways, I want to uh, look again to Psalm 91 and I'll look at two verses here this evening. And so first verse will be verse number 9. Psalm 91 verse number 9 says, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. So we're going to look at these two verses here in Psalm 91 as we continue in this chapter. But many people want to claim that verse right now in Psalm 91. 91 verse 10 that says there shall no no evil befall me neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling and so nobody wants the virus to come to their house so we're going to look at this verse here today and so let's go ahead and pray and ask God's blessing father I pray you bless your word today I pray it be just an incredible uh, help to so many people Lord as it's been to me we love you in Jesus name we pray amen so as we uh, look here at this thought um, it's, it's, we see very clear some, some conditions. First of all, it says, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my habitation, even the Most High, thy habitation. So because. So there is a condition to this promise, and that is to make God our habitation. And what, what does habitation mean? So we're going to look at this, uh, this here real quickly. It says, um, the place, the habitation is the place you live. It's, it's a home, it's a home sweet home. Nope, there's no place like home. And so I love home. I love the home that God's given me. I love my family. And home is just a wonderful place. We need to make living in God and in his presence, we need to make that our home. It's what you see, we need to make God our habitation. A home is a place where you can relax from all the stresses of life. And that's the same way with God. When you come and make him your habitation, you can relax from all the stresses of life. First Peter 5 says casting all your care upon him for he careth for you and so we can do that and then we see a place where you spend time with those you love the most and that's right and so when we uh, when we make God our habitation we're just spending time with him because we he's the one we love the most and we're just enjoying his presence sure we want that that promise that uh, the plague would not come near our house but even more important than that is that we will make God our habitation we would live in him and so habitat, habitat, I, uh, I like to hunt. And if you ever hunt deer, there's, there's uh, three things that they will tell you uh, uh, for sure, I mean, among other things, but they'll tell you, you gotta be in their habitat. You got to go where they're at. And so some of the things you will we'll see is they have to have, is they have to have water. And so if there's no water there at all, it's just dry, there will be no deer. Uh, but if there's water, they also have to have food. There has to be a food source and then also shelter. And so that pretty much makes up a habitat for a deer is those three things. And so if you can find those three things, you're gonna have a lot better chance of finding deer. And so that's, uh, those are just the basics there, food, water, shelter. And so uh, many people would say as a human, well, that's, isn't that the same thing our basic needs are? Food, water, shelter. But I wanna say this is not true. This is not true. The very basic, most important need we have even before water and food and shelter is we need God. We need God. Our greatest need is God. And so we see that in verse number one and verse number nine, where it talks about how that it says, he that dwelt in the secret place of the most high. And then also we see that we make God the most high, our refuge. We dwell in him. We we live in him. We enjoy his presence. And uh, our greatest need is God. The blessing, the blessings and promises here are not for all Christians. So in this passage, when it says that we can have those promises, it's not for all Christians, but for those who live in close fellowship with God. Every child of God looks toward the Holy of Holies and the mercy seat, but not all go into the most holy place with God. Many, are, many ch- children of God will look to that Holy of Holies and that holy place, and, but they won't, they won't go towards him. They won't draw nigh. They won't take the necessary steps to walk into his presence. And so ever... Um, it says they run to it at times and enjoy occasional approaches to God, but many Christians do not make God their habitation. They do not make a habit of being in this holy place 
with God. Those that make a habit of dwelling in the presence of the Most High are entitled to rare and special benefits. And so those that truly will make the time to spend time in His presence, those are the ones who are entitled to those, those precious promises and benefits. The veil in the temple was rent in twain when Jesus died. This signified that every Christian can enter into the Shekinah glory of God and dwell in His presence. Many, though, just look longingly in the direction of God and long to be in His presence, but they will not, they're not willing to take the steps to put themselves in His very presence. And so we're going to look at just some ideas as we're talking about that Shekinah glory, that, that uh, Holy of Holies. And it's interesting how we see in the tabernacle, we see uh, several things. And so uh, as you would go into the tabernacle or even into the temple, the very first thing that God said to put there, the first thing you would come across is the brazen altar, a brass altar. And on that altar is where they would offer the sacrifices that um, would picture Jesus Christ. And so, um, so we see that that would uh, signify or represent a substitutionary death so before we can come in God's presence first we must have had a substitutionary death we must have had accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior because he's the only one that God will accept and so if you're not saved that's the first thing to come into his presence into his glory and to be let him be your habitat to dwell in a secret place you must have been saved and then we also see that that, that brazen altar is a picture of the judgment of sin and so we see that God poured out judgment upon his own son. So we could go into his holy of holies and we can go into that, his presence. And then we also see it also pictures a living sacrifice, a total surrender to God. You know, many Christians, they, they're glad to be saved, but they're not totally surrendered. They're, they're uh, following so many other things. Are you willing to say, I'm going to totally surrender my heart and my life to God? And there's going to be no, none else, no other way. And so that's the first thing to come into his, uh, to his presence and to, to come into that Shekinah glory of God and to, to dwell in, his, uh, in his, his secret place and to make him your habitat in your life is to, um, is to first of all, be saved and to, be, to become a living sacrifice, totally surrendered. The second thing we see is, is uh, also the... Um, is the brazen uh, laver, the brazen laver. So this is a place where they would wash, the priests would wash before they could go into that holy place and then also into the Holy of Holies. They had to wash and be clean. And so this, uh, this picture is daily confession. So as a Christian, yeah, we're not perfect. And we must daily come to him and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I need to, I need to come back to you. Lord, I need, I need to be forgiven for that thought or for that thing that I've done. And so it pictures a holy life. And so that's what, if we want to truly be there, we have to have a holy life as well. And then we see also as you go inside that holy place, that first section, there is the table of showbread. And that pictures Jesus as the bread of life. And I want to say that uh, something about bread, it's, it's very satisfying. If you, um, if you especially whole wheat bread, you eat it, it's just very satisfying. It's one of those satisfying meals. And so Jesus is pictured as the bread of life. And I want to tell you that the only thing that truly will satisfy you is Jesus. And so... So many times people are expecting other things or other people to satisfy them. And they're going to come up empty. I think they get frustrated because they, they, I'm not satisfied. I'm really not happy in my life. And they're expecting other people or other things to make them happy. That's not going to make you happy. The only thing that will make you happy is Jesus. He's the only one that will satisfy. And then also we see in the, um, in the holy place there is the golden candlesticks, the seven golden candlesticks. These picture Jesus as the light of the world. And um, we see that Jesus, by the way, he is the light. And every single person needs to come to that light and come to know Jesus Christ. But the more closer you get to, to him, the, the brighter that light's going to be for you. And John, the revelator in the book of Revelation, when he was describing Jesus, when he saw him, he said he's shown as the sun in its strength. So that's just how bright Jesus is can be and even that's the only way he could describe him because that's the only thing he knew that was that bright but you know what he would be even brighter than that and so to see in jesus in your life in, in that brightness when you come into this holy of holies and you come into that that uh, that holy place you're going to see jesus brighter than you've ever seen him before you're going to enjoy his his presence and then right before you go into the holy of holies there's the altar of incense and this pictures the prayers of the saved the prayers of the saved and so the precious to god are, are his are our prayers and talks about the, the the prayers of the saints and how precious they are to him and how that he wants us to pray and so if we truly want to enter into that secret place it's going to have to be some time of prayer there's going to have to be a time set aside when we pray to him and we seek his face and so then you enter into the holy of holies 
and what you what is in there is the Ark of the Covenant. And you might say, well, um, and, and you know, I don't know if I, I could come before the Ark of the Covenant because I'm I'm a sinful person. I made some sinful mistakes. I don't I don't know that God would allow me that close into His presence. But on top of that Ark of the Covenant is the mercy seat, where um, Jesus' blood in heaven on the mercy seat was sprinkled for us. And I want to say, we are sinners, yes. But God has He's given us mercy. We can stand before His presence. I'm not worthy to enter into the very presence of God. This is true, but you've been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's inside that ark, it's just some interesting things we see here. The bowl of manna. And that pictures God's provision, how they were in the wilderness and they had they had nothing. And God provided for them. And I want to say, yes, God's going to provide for you, you as well. And as, as you're in, the, in His Holy of Holies, you'll see that. Aaron's rod that budded was also in the Ark of the Covenant. And so this is, shows God's direction and His leading. Um, they had a, uh, there was a rebellion, and many had it went away from God. And they, they actually put all the staffs, all the rods together. And they said, the one that, that brings forth leaves and blossoms, and that's the one that God has chosen to be the priesthood. And so, so the next morning they looked and sure enough, Aaron's rod is the one that, that budded and bloomed and actually had, had uh, almonds on it. And so, um, and so Aaron's, Aaron's rod that budded, so just showing God's direction. They were looking for truth and they were looking for what God's direction was and he showed them. And then we also see the Ten Commandments was in the Ark of the Covenant. And this uh, picture is, it shows us God's word. And so this is how important it is that we stay into God's word. Every time we pick up God's word, we have the very heart of God in our hands. And so that so shows us just how important it is to, to spend that time in God's Word. And so will you make God your habitat? Will you make Him the place you live? Will you, will you, will you say, just like the Apostle Paul did, did that to live, uh, to live is Christ? And that's, that's what you live for. And so we can truly make God our habitation. And so we see that there in verse number 9. And then we see in verse number 10. It says, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitat. And so here we see in uh, this, this promise, oh, we've made him our habitat. In the verse number 10, it says, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Wow. Wow. I say, wow, I don't want anything to come close to my house. I don't want anything to come nigh into my dwelling. So we see that promise that's given this is not to say that you would never get sick, that nobody will live forever. We know that's true. So we can't say, well, um, you know, if, if this is the case, then I could live forever. No, we don't want to live forever in this sinful body, in this sinful world. We want to, this is not truly our home. Our home is with God in heaven. And so, yes, we want to, that promise that we want, that plague won't come to our house. And yes, God gives us that promise. But at the same time, we know that we cannot live forever. We, there's going to be sickness. And so this comes when man sinned and sickness passed, death passed upon the whole world. And then sickness came as well. And so Romans chapter 5, verse number 12 says, Wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. So, yes, uh, sin has brought death and sickness, and this is not our home. We're going to someday be with God in heaven forever, and so we can trust Him in all these things and know that He is going to, to take care of us. But we also see this promise that He's given us. And so when we dwell in His habitat, when we live in Him, live in Christ, yes, when we're there around in His presence, that's when we're going to have His protection without a doubt and so that's that's the key this being said um god can give his children protection from from the plague from anything so th thinking about that with over 1,000 cases of COVID 19 in mckinley county right now and so we'd say man i i need that protection for me for my family uh governor michelle grisham said the rest of the state is starting to open back up then she said, except McKinley County, Cibola County, and San Juan County. So these ones are just getting closed down more. Of course, we see that with Gallup actually closed. Saw pictures of Gallup today that my wife had showed me. Not, nobody, empty parking lots by Safeway, that whole complex, and just uh, Lowe's, Shop and Save. No, no cars. It's just incredible to see those pictures. And so um, Gallup IC units are maxed out. And so they are actually med flighting 20 to 40 per week to Albuquerque right now. So if we want to claim this verse, we need to make God the Most High our habitation. 
many who do not know Jesus as their Savior. And so the most important thing, would you repent of your sins and accept Jesus as the only way of salvation? Would you accept him into your heart and your life? Because this is more important than protection from a virus. We're going to die, this virus or some other way, unless Jesus comes back. And the most important thing is having Jesus Christ as our Savior. And yes, we want that protection, but even more important is knowing Jesus Christ. And so, would you come to Jesus not for protection from a virus, but to know personally the God of heaven, the Most High God? That's more important than anything else. And so as I just wanted to challenge each of us today, including myself, to make a time in our life when we get alone and we spend time with Him, a secret place in our life, a secret place, and just enjoy His presence like we've never enjoyed it before and walk with Him. And then we'll see that protection. Then we'll see that, that, uh, that plague kept away from our house. But that's not our goal. Our goal is to walk into His presence, to walk into that Shekinah glory, into that, that a Holy of Holies, and spend time with him and many people think well i don't know if i could actually do that i don't know if that's that's for me i don't I'm, other people may maybe can but i'm not sure yes you can yes you can take those steps to walk into his presence and enjoy him in a very very intimate way why well, we'll see him face to face someday and you'll get the chance to, to spend some time with him and know him but why not now why not now why not enjoy that that uh, that fullness of joy in his presence we love you thank you so much for watching